Heat, which you will recall, is the transfer of energy that causes or utilizes chaotic motion in the surroundings. It can be quantified by taking the integral over the temperature change of the heat capacity, where the heat capacity of an object is the energy required to raise the temperature of a given quantity by one Kelvin. For example, if you're heating two kilograms of water, then the heat capacity you would use would be for two kilograms of water. However, it is convenient to express the heat capacity of substances in more general terms so that they can be written in reference materials. Two common ones are the specific heat capacity and the molar heat capacity. These are heat capacities of substances divided by the mass or the number of moles of a substance. That way you can look up the specific heat capacity of water in a book, multiply it by the amount you are using, in our example 2 kilograms, and that way you would get the heat capacity specific to our example. Furthermore, depending upon the process where either the volume or the pressure is being held constant, the heat capacity is different. We will see the importance of this as we move forward in the course. The difference in constant pressure and constant volume processes can be observed in how heat is measured. In our current context, calorimetry is the process of determining the heat transferred by measuring the temperature change of a process. Constant pressure calorimetry can be formed in nested coffee cups to insulate the process from transferring the heat to the surroundings, but it is open to the atmosphere. This is how the pressure remains constant since the atmosphere's pressure will not change due to what goes on in the calorimeter. Constant volume calorimetry is performed using a bomb calorimeter. The reaction occurs in a rigid sealed container in the center of the device so that the process occurs at constant volume. In both cases, the processes is immersed in a liquid, for example water, and the temperature change of the water is measured in order to deduce the heat transferred. Let's do a quick example to see how some of these ideas on heat work in practice. So in this example, what we're looking at is a system where we're going to input 330 joules of energy, and we're going to be raising 24.6 grams of benzene from 21 degrees Celsius to 28.7 degrees Celsius at constant pressure. And so what we're trying to determine is the molar heat capacity at constant pressure. And so where we're going to start this problem is just at the generic starting point, where we've got Ti, Tf, the heat capacity times a very small change in temperature, and we're going to integrate this over the two temperature changes. In this case, what we're going to assume is that the heat capacity is temperature independent, and that over small temperature changes, we can probably make this assumption. This C, of course, also is the heat capacity specific to 24.6 grams of benzene. And so when we do this calculation, that's what we're going to get out. And then, of course, the second step to turn it into a molar heat capacity is to be able to, is to divide it by the number of moles of benzene that we have. So moving forward, we can actually substitute in, in this case, our bounds of integration. And we can also take the C outside of the integral because, as we just described, it's temperature independent. So it's not actually going to be a part of the integral. 294.15, and that's when I add 293 or 273.15 to 21 degrees Celsius. This is 301.85, and that's just when I do that conversion to, to Kelvin. This integral is straightforward. Since we've got the integral of dt, well, that's just going to be equal to t, and this is evaluated between 301.85, 294.15, and so in this case, I can actually start substituting in values, and I can um, put in or evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we, as we saw in the problem, we put in 330 joules of energy. I have my heat capacity, and then I have my difference in temperature, or I have basically the fundamental theorem of calculus saying I'm going to write this as a difference of temperature. And so what I end up with in the end is a heat capacity that's equal to 42.86 joules per Kelvin. And so remember this value is for exactly 24.6 grams of benzene. And the problem asked for the molar heat capacity. So that means we have to take this number that we have right here and we have to divide it by the number of moles of benzene so that we can get then the joules per Kelvin per mole, meaning how much energy do we have to put in per mole to raise it by one degree Kelvin. 
So first then we have to find out the number of moles of benzene. And so that means then we're just going to do a quick conversion where I've got 24.6 grams of benzene. And I'm going to multiply that by one mole. of Benzene is divided by the molar mass, 78.11 grams. And so what I have is 0 0.315 moles. And so then to find the molar heat capacity, and in this case, since the process is at constant pressure already, then I can add that P there as well. And that's equal to the heat capacity that we just calculated divided by the number of moles. So then that's 42.86 divided by 0 0.315. And in the end, what we get is 136.1 joules per mole Kelvin.